Hi, and welcome to the first edition of Day Starters. Our daughter Hannah, with her husband Brandon, and our three grandkids have just recently settled in Jakarta. Hannah requested recordings of just the Gospel of John with the prayer at the end. Ava is seven and Joel is six and Devon is almost one. Their family has been through a lot of upheaval in this last year, and because of that, it seems best to homeschool them this year rather than subject them to yet another school in a strange city and culture. Hannah wanted something she could play with a minimum of fuss at the beginning of each school day. These recordings are simply the last reading and prayer from the GN series using the Good News Bible starting at day number 168. Sometimes the prayer will include topics that were from the other readings of that day. So here we go, Hannah. We're proud of you and love you. And to anyone else listening, may the Lord bless you. Real good. Today we start the Gospel of John. I always look forward each year to reading the Gospel of John. John's Gospel is different from all the other Gospels. John was probably very young when he became Jesus' follower, perhaps 25 years old but he seems to have waited until very late in life to begin writing, perhaps when he was 85 years old. This was long after the other Gospels and even the Epistles were written. The title he gives himself in this book is The Disciple Whom Jesus Loved. This does not mean that Jesus didn't love all the other eleven. John chapter 1 in the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the very beginning, this person called the Word was with God. Through him God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light, so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light, he came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on all people. The Word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him, so he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The Word became a human being and, full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. John spoke about him. He cried out, This is the one I was talking about when I said, He comes after me, but he is greater than I am, because he existed before I was born. Out of the fullness of his grace he has blessed us all giving us one blessing after another. God gave the law through Moses, but grace and truth came through Christ Jesus. 
No one has ever seen God, the only Son, who is the same as God and is at the Father's side. He has made him known. The Jewish authorities in Jerusalem sent some priests and Levites to John to ask him, Whose position are you fulfilling? John did not refuse to answer, but spoke out openly and clearly, saying, I am not the Messiah. Whose position are you assuming then? they asked. Are you Elijah? No, I'm not, John answered. Are you the prophet? they asked. No, he replied. Then tell us who you are, they said. We have to take an answer back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John answered by quoting the prophet Yesiah. I am the voice of someone shouting in the desert. Make a straight path for the Lord to travel. The messengers who had been sent by the Pharisees then asked John, If you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet, why do you baptize? John answered, I baptize with water, but among you stands the one you do not know. He is coming after me, but I am not good enough to be the servant who unties his sandals. All this happened in Bethany, on the east side of the Jordan River, where John was baptizing. The next day John saw Jesus coming to him and said, There is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I was talking about when I said, A man is coming after me, but he is greater than I am, because he existed before I was born. I did not know who he would be, but I came baptizing with water in order to make him known to the people of Israel. And John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and stay on him. I still did not know that he was the one, but God, who sent me to baptize with water, had said to me, You will see the Spirit come down and stay on a man. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I have seen it said John, and I tell you that he is the Son of God. And now, please join me in prayer. O Lord, we love you. You listen to our prayers. In fact, you listen every time any one of us calls to you. You protect us from danger and death so often, even when we don't realize it. And you are kind to us when we feel crushed because people have failed us. Lord, how we thank you that through the one called the Word, you have brought us from darkness to light and from death to life and you have accepted us as your children. We rejoice to call you Father. And, Lord Jesus, we thank you for making the Father known to us. We are so thankful for your position of power at the right-hand side of God and for your overwhelming kindness that showers us with one blessing after another. We thank you for what it means that you are the Lamb of God. You died to take away our sins. And you are the one, unlike John, who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. O Son of God, we are not worthy to be your servants, the ones who might be given the task of removing your sandals. Even so, we pray that we might be your servants today. Please be with us.